So we're going to be looking now at core, core anatomy and basic cueing for core activation. Now what do we mean by core? Core could be seen as the entire body, as we are one interdependent linked system, everything linking to everything else. Or we could view the core as the head through to the base of the pelvis, as this is our central trunk and prime area for energy transfer. We're going to be looking today at the clinical model that I use in clinic and in my Pilates classes, which is this abdomen region. Now, in a very simplistic model, we have two types of system here running in the centerpiece. We have our core system, which is a very deep unit and team of muscles that I'll refer to as the inner unit. And then we have an outer layer, almost wrapping around. These systems work together, but we also need to get the correct timing happening for good movement. So, anatomy-wise, in the core, we're looking at almost like a capsule setup. We have the diaphragm at the top, underneath is the floor of the pelvis, pelvic floor, and then we have a deep muscle running around the side. This is called transversus abdominis. It traverses the abdomen. At the back, we have some really small muscles that connect each segment of the spine together. This is called multifidus, and in the lower back area, it is lumbar multifidus. Now, the core functions with something called a feed-forward loop. This means when we have intention of movement, the deep system is going to stabilise and prepare, and then we can bring around movement from our outer more global muscles. The muscles of the core are primarily endurance-based, so they have a slightly different fibre setup than the moving muscles. They can be referred to as tonic, these are your stabilizers, and phasic, these are your global muscles, because they come on and off with phases of movement. Core recruitment is driven from the diaphragm. So, when we breathe in, the diaphragm presses down. That has an effect of pushing the abdominal contents down and out. This then stimulates a small stretch within transversus abdominis and the floor of the pelvis. When our muscles are stretched and stimulated, they then contract as a response. This is our stretch to shorten mechanism. So with each breath that you have, you have a stretch of your core unit and it responds by contracting. And this goes on and off throughout your breath cycle. It's part of this contraction mechanism that provides the stability. The outer muscles of the abdominal system are more involved in movement. So they're looking at side bending, twisting, and moving the rib cage towards the pelvis. When we are looking at core activation, it's a very subtle connection. When I'm cueing people in my classes and in physio sessions, we're thinking of doing it all up here in our head, in our virtual body. Some of the cues I like to use are things such as, imagine that we have magnets here on the pelvis, and these magnets are slowly attracting towards each other. Another cue you might use is literally visually elevator doors closing. You might be somebody that needs to cue from the pelvic floor, but you only want to think of something like slow the flow as a connection, as opposed to stop the flow, as this encourages too much of a global recruitment. For some of you, you may need to cue from the back of the pelvis and cue from the multifidus muscles. Cueing those two rear nobles at the back of the pelvis, little magnets on there, is quite a nice cue here. When we're looking at movement, we want to make sure we have appropriate connection within our core muscles and then our outer muscles. Here's an example. If I'm lying here on the floor and I'm going to just be breathing, I would have my inhale, exhale, and connect. Those are my magnets. Inhale, release, exhale, connect. 
And they're going to come into one of the first exercises we often look at, which is a single knee fallout and return. Now again, I have a lot of contact here with the floor. Just having this small knee opening, I shouldn't need to be gripping with my outer muscles. So as I exhale, I have a small knee opening and then return. Constantly checking here that I don't have excess activation in my outer abdominal muscles. If I pick another common exercise, which is a knee fold, a one knee fold, again, I should be able to do this with just my deep abdomen working. So as I lift up, my deep tummy connects, but my outer muscles don't. If I bring this then into a second knee lift, which is tabletop, I want to feel my outer muscles come on and help. This, the minute this foot comes off the floor, it's more difficult. When I'm here though, I can relax into it again. So what I would feel here is my deep tummy recruiting with my visualization. I then fold my knee, still deep tummy or inner unit. Then as I go to lift, my outer muscles come on, but then they can relax off again here because I'm nicely stacked. Then they come on again as I lower. If I'm doing an exercise such as a plank, then my outer muscles are going to be on because I need that extra recruitment because it's a more difficult exercise. Our breathing can come into play with how much core recruitment we got. So if we remember, we are slightly stronger with the contraction. If I'm doing something harder, like bending to lift, I would want to do it on an exhale to create a stronger system. When we're doing our exercises, we really want to be able to focus on getting that pre-connection of your inner unit and appropriate work on and off of our outer unit. Our outer unit forms part of our dynamic sling systems. So they're the ones that cross over the pelvis and help stabilize the abdomen, pelvic and hip area. These are important to think about when we're doing our training.